everybody, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I wanna show you how easy it is to run a 12 volt compressor fridge while camping or on a road trip. Now, traditionally, you can plug these into your 12 volt socket in your vehicle, but you do run the risk of killing your starter battery if the engine isn't running. And some vehicles, when you turn off the ignition, it actually kills power to your 12 volt socket, so you can have a little bit of an issue there. So the easiest way around that is to run the fridge off a small, medium-sized power station and charge it up with a solar panel so you can get basically unlimited runtime. Now in the video today, I have two different setups. I have an affordable setup and I have a more premium setup and I wanna see if the cost difference makes a difference in the actual performance. Now taking a look at the budget side of things first, I have the Iceco VL45. This is a 45 liter 12 volt fridge and has a C-Cop compressor. It's very efficient and durable. Now I have that fridge plugged into my Pecron E600. This has lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is one of the best budget power stations that I've tested. It comes in at a really good price. Okay, so plugged into the Pecron power station, I have this 120 watt folding solar panel. This is from Elicanta. It has ETFE coating on each panel. It's a quad fold design, so it folds up really small. It does have kickstands and uh, it's fairly affordable. So the plan here is to get the power station completely full during the day, then the battery will drop down overnight and then this will charge it back up. Now taking a look at the premium side of things, I have the brand new EcoFlow Glacier. Now this is just a little bit smaller than the VL45, but it packs a ton of features. For example, you have a built-in ice maker on the top, a really nice display with smart app connectivity. On the inside, you can run it as a dual zone or single zone. I do have the divider removed, so it's running as a single zone, and you can put in a battery to get extended run times. Now, powering the Glacier, I have the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. Now, I am a huge fan of this power station. It's one of my favorites, and I wanna see how it performs against the E600. So, pretty interesting. This has a lot of really good features, but it is more expensive than the E600. Now plugged into the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, I have EcoFlow's 220 watt bifacial solar panel. Now out of all the 200 watt panels I've tested on the channel, this has put out the most power. So definitely really good there. There are a couple downsides though. It's fairly heavy, there are no kickstands, so I'm leaning it up against this fence and the price is pretty expensive. Okay, so there you have it, both of our setups. We have the budget offering and the premium offering. And I'm really curious to see how well each one does because to spending more money get you better performance. Now, just FYI, I have each fridge set to 36 degrees on the set point. They're running as single zones and I have a Bluetooth wireless thermometer in each one so we can track the actual temperature going on inside so we can see which one is more accurate to the set point. Now, right now it is 85 degrees. It's a fairly sunny day and it's forecasted to be 90 degrees over the next two days. And I will be running this for three to four days. I'm not sure how long yet. So we'll see how well this does. It's gonna get fairly warm in the back of the truck here, so it'll be a good test for higher temperatures. So I'll give you guys an update as we move forward with the test, maybe in the evening, in the middle of the day, in the morning, and uh, hopefully you guys are excited to see how these do. Okay, so the sun has just gone down. Now the solar panels have been in the shade for quite a bit. Now I didn't clarify earlier, I have these solar wires coming through this window down on the concrete over to the solar panels. So let's just see what the power stations are sitting at. So the Pecron is sitting at 84% and it looks like the fridge just turned on there. So that one is spooling up. The EcoFlow River 2 Pro sitting at 92%. So we're just gonna let this run overnight and we'll see what the battery percentages are in the morning. So it's the next morning. You can see we have quite a bit of clouds and wind today. This is gonna be interesting. So I have the solar panels still connected up. Let's get an update, see how much these dropped overnight. So the Pecoron dropped from 84% down to 65%. We're getting five watts of solar input. And the EcoFlow River 2 Pro dropped from 92% down to 77%. We're getting 27 watts input. So I hope we have plenty of sun today to charge these up or we're gonna be cutting this test a little short. So we'll see how it goes. So now it's 4 p.m. and uh, it's been cloudy. It's actually rained a little bit today. This is so weird. This is not forecasted at all. So, well, that's what you get sometimes. It's not really 90 degrees. I'd say it's around maybe 82 or so. Maybe if the sun was out, it would be there. So remember, we are at like 65% this morning, 77%. Let's see what they're sitting at now. Okay, so check it out. We're sitting at 72% with seven watts coming in. So it actually has charged up from 65%, even though it's been really cloudy today. 
Now looking at the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, this is the benefit of a 200 watt panel. We're almost full, sitting at 98%. So pretty interesting. The 200 watt panel is definitely helping out. Well, good morning, everybody. Look at that. We actually have some sun. So maybe we'll actually get these charged up. Now, last night was Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to everyone out there. So I didn't really spend some time checking in on this stuff. So let's take a look at the panels. Uh, it's around eight o'clock this morning and we have some partial shading on both the panels. Now that EcoFlow just keeps sliding down, falling over. That is one of the downsides. There are no kickstands on that. So see if I can prop that up a little bit later, but let's take a look at these power stations. I'm a little bit worried because yesterday was really cloudy. So take a look at the Pecron first. You can see we're sitting at 46% state of charge. So quite a bit lower than yesterday with 13 Watts coming in. Now that's because it's, that solar panel is partially shaded, but imagine if we had a small power station here, this would have died overnight. That's why I always recommend a 500 watt hour or larger power station to power your fridge, just so that you can get through the times when you don't have solar. So looking at the River 2 Pro, we are sitting at 80% state of charge, which is significantly higher than the Pecron. And we're also charging at 24 watts from that 200 watt panel. So you can see the benefit of a slightly larger power station and a larger solar panel. Now, if you guys remember on the inside of each fridge, I have a wireless Bluetooth thermometer to track the actual temperature versus the set point. Now, just a reminder, each of these are set to 36 degrees. Let's bring up the graph for the EcoFlow Glacier. So looking at the graph, you can see that 40.1 degrees Fahrenheit and the minimum was 32.7. So a spread of right around eight degrees. The average temperature was 35.6. Now looking at the IceCo VL45, the maximum temperature was 38.7. The minimum temperature was 34.5, which is right around four degrees and the average was 36.5. So about four degrees more narrow on the IceCo VL45 than on the EcoFlow Glacier. So the IceCo definitely has a more accurate set point versus the temperature inside. So we just hit the 48 hour mark and it is super windy today. I'd say it's around 92 degrees. Actually got some sun, which is nice. So these should be charged up. Now, as for the solar panels, that EcoFlow is just gonna be laying flat on the ground. In this wind, it will not stay up. Um, I did have to adjust this panel once. It kind of blew away just a little bit, but no damage. So let's look at the power stations and I have my thermometer out here. So let's see how hot it is. So taking a closer look at the thermometer, you can see we're above 100 degrees. I'd say right around 105 to 107 degrees in the back of the truck. Now taking a look at the Pecron, we're sitting at 98% state of charge and we're showing 40 watts input right now. Now the fridge is running, so it's showing the net input which means that the fridge is pulling 35 watts and we're seeing 40 watts. We're almost seeing 75 watts of solar from that solar panel. So good to see this fully charged back up from earlier this morning. Now taking a closer look at the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, we're sitting at 99% state of charge and we're seeing around 114 watts coming in from the solar panel. Now there are some clouds moving in, so we just barely dropped. You can see now we're down to 80 watts, but I did see a peak of 175 just a second ago mixed conditions, but hey, at least we're full on the state of charge. Now it's nice to see that both power stations are near 100% state of charge, and they're actually gonna stay this way until the sun goes down later tonight because the solar panels right now are easily able to offset the usage of the compressors. So when you have a really sunny day like this, it doesn't really make a difference if you have a 100 watt panel or a 200 watt panel. But if you remember yesterday when we had overcast conditions, the 200 watt panel made a huge difference, which is pretty interesting in this test to get both sunny days and cloudy days. So here we are at the last day of testing. It's been 72 hours and it is a beautiful day. We had a little cold front come through. So it is around 75 degrees today. Man, you couldn't ask for better weather. We have both the solar panels here laying out. Now it did rain overnight, so they did get a little bit dirty, but they are functioning even after a little bit of rain. Now, if we go over here and check out the power stations, let's see what they're looking like. Now taking a look at the Pecron, it's sitting at 99% state of charge and it's just topping off the battery with 43 watts input. So this power station actually worked really well for our testing. Now looking at the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, sitting at 99% state of charge as well with 172 watts going in from the solar panel. And that's with it even laying flat. So it just shows you how much power you can get out of that 220 watt bifacial panel. So what'd you guys think of this experiment? A full 72 hour run test with both fridges outdoors. 
you know, I thought it was pretty interesting that we had cloudy days, sunny days. I mean, today is so bright, I can like hardly see the camera, it's crazy. But uh, comparing both the fridges, well, I really liked the temperature accuracy of the VL45. It's super efficient and it's just a very simple fridge. And it comes in at a pretty decent price. I have a 12% off discount code on Iceco products. I'll include that down in the video description. And if you're looking for something a little bit more fancy, then maybe you want to look at the EcoFlow Glacier with its built-in ice maker. It offers you know, a hybrid zone where you can run it as a dual zone or a single zone, and it even has the built-in battery. Now, I will recommend that you purchase the battery for the EcoFlow Glacier because I've noticed when it doesn't have the battery in there, uh, the compressor can surge quite a bit and it'll actually overload the DC output on some of the power stations that I've tested. So if you are gonna be purchasing the EcoFlow Glacier, I do recommend getting the built-in battery, which will increase the cost of that. Now, both of these setups have a very wide range of costs. So let me break that down. I'll put it on the screen for you so you can see kind of the cost of one versus the other. And of course, you can mix and match anything to meet your actual budget. Now, what's something that I learned from this video? Well, one of the things that I learned from this video is the larger solar panel that you have on your power station, the better off you're gonna be, especially in those overcast conditions. For example, the Pecron did drop a bit lower than the EcoFlow River 2 Pro uh, state of charge just because it had a smaller solar panel. So I'd recommend purchasing a larger solar panel if your budget allows, just so you have um, more reserve power if you have overcast conditions or more shade. For example, when I go camping in the mountains, um, I run into a lot more clouds and a lot more shading from trees than I do here at my house. So it's important that I make sure that I have enough solar to get through that trip. Now, if any of you happen to have any questions or comments about this type of setup, basically running a 12 volt compressor fridge with a medium sized power station or connecting up a solar panel, throw a comment down below. Now, I like to use this setup for camping or road trips because I don't wanna have to bring ice with me. And when you have these type of fridges, it's just really convenient. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll have all the links down in the video description to these products. Also, I'll recommend a few other videos that you can check out so that you can get more familiar with 12 volt compressor fridges. I'd also love to hear your guys' setup. How do you run your 12 volt fridges? What power station and solar panels do you use? Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.